Garakira and and Coach Neely uh, from Lincoln Northeast, and they're going to share a little bit with us about um, things that they're involved in, but also a focus on wrestling. And so, um, welcome to both of you. I'm glad to have y'all in studio. Thanks for having us this morning. Appreciate the invite. Kira's got that head nod, so she gave us the thumbs up. She's like, get going. I want to have those moments with y'all. That's all right. That's all right. (laughs) Hey, Patrick, tell us a little bit about yourself, um, your just educational journey, and just a little bit about your athletic journey. Yeah. Um, I'm originally from Eastern Iowa, uh, so I'm a Hawkeye fan. So, you know, I mean, it, it oh, Harrison, now. go it ahead, down escort down. him out there, escort no, him right I now. See, Kira, you got the rest of this segment. <laughs> <laughs> I see, I see the sticker up in the corner, right? So, we got a little Hawkeye represented in here. Um, originally from Eastern Iowa, um, I actually probably took you know what not a typical journey, uh, to kind of get where I am. Uh, coming out of high school, uh, I love sports, I, I love the activities, the interactions. That was that was kind of my main motivation in high school. Um, but school wasn't super easy. Um, and so signing up for four more years of school seemed like a, a idea that I wasn't ready for. Um, so I actually went into the trades. Um, I went into heating and air conditioning uh, with some family friends, really, really gave me a chance to kind of grow up, mature a little bit more, um, see the world maybe, you know, 10 years down the road instead of just 10 days in front of me. Um, and that, that gave me a chance to grow up a lot. Um, and then that helped me to kind of see, you know, I, I think pursuing further education was something I wanted to do. Um, I ended up at Northwest Missouri State, actually. All so right, go, go, Bearcats. go Bearcats, go right? Cats. Go Bearcats, big shout out to them again. Um, where I really, really would say that I kind of came into my own and blossomed. Um, the thought of doing, you know, some athletics at the next level was something that crossed my mind, but really kind of something I think during that time of, of being out of school, being off the wrestling mat and, you know, off the field, I, I kind of let that go. Um, I, I wasn't super talented as an athlete. You know, I, I did four sports in high school, um, enjoyed all of them, was not a, a, by all means, you know, championship athlete in any of them. Um, It just really gave me a chance to be a part of something that was bigger than me. And that's, I think, what I enjoyed the most. Um, Made my way from Northwest Missouri State um, to Lincoln, Nebraska, doing my student teaching and liked it so much, stayed, met my wife. Um, And so here we are today. Um, And then, you know, got into the coaching side of things at, at Northeast in 2006 when I got here. And Kind of, kind of been a rocket ever since. Awesome. So. And, and what's your role at Northeast right now? Yeah, right now um, I am now a counselor. Um, that was a change that I made. Um, this is my second year in, in the counseling okay. side of things at Northeast. Um, after stepping down from coaching um, the wrestling program, like there was a huge void kind of in my heart. I, I will never forget the first day that I walked over to the building, swiped my ID, and it, it didn't let me in. Um, <laughs> and so it's like, we can't can't keep doing this. I, we got to be so, real clear. We're looking for educators. So you're right, we will make right. sure your ID works. Yep, so. Yep, yep. <laughs> yeah. um, so I, I, you know, I taught at Dawes and then moved over to Mickle as a counselor right. too, but then was always connected to Northeast uh, during that time. And so once that changed a little bit, so made that adjustment and and joined the counseling team at Northeast High School. Absolutely awesome. Love it. Awesome. Thanks. And we've got Scott Kira. So Kira, tell us uh, just a little bit, where did you go to school? Um, have you always lived in Lincoln? And then uh, a couple of things that you do at Northeast. Um, I went to elementary school at Belmont Elementary. Okay. Go I, ahead, Cougars. I transferred to Campbell Elementary my second grade year. After that, I went to Goodrich for sixth grade and then half of seventh grade and i transferred to dawes and then i finished my middle school years there and then i've been going to northeast since i was a freshman and i'm now a sophomore okay so you're big time there yeah. you're big time in those halls i like that i like that Kira, i heard you're involved in a number of different things before we get into the, the wrestling aspect um so what else are you what else do you do at northeast what do you enjoy um maybe even outside of school um outside of school i do pretty much i like working out and things like that staying active inside of school i play softball and i do cheer okay and then i'm gonna do tennis in the spring and wrestling during the winter so multi-involved not just athletically but multi-involved so that's that's awesome in itself so gotta ask this question because we had erica kirkland i always go back to this her cheerleading squad i think she said works out at 5 30 in the morning okay so are you a morning person enjoys working out or do you prefer to work out in the evening um, if I can get up, I'm a morning person, but most of the time that doesn't happen. So in the evening, for sure. Also, five thirty a.m. workouts at Northeast. Let's go. Let's make it happen, coaches. <laughs> Coach Charity's looking at me like, oh, I hate you. I hate <laughs> you. I ain't. That ain't gonna happen. That ain't gonna happen. So, Patrick, tell us a little bit about wrestling. Um, you know, who? What kind of scholars get into that? And um, this is gonna be the first year that they're gonna have sanctioned wrestling 
for for females, yeah. um, for girls, and it's going to be intertwined with this uh, state tournament at the CHI Health Center yep. um, in February. And so, who who wrestles? I mean, I, I mean, that's just always. I mean, we see stuff on TV and this, that, and the other. Jordan Burroughs, but what type of person mindset has to be an individual that wants to wrestle? To be honest with you, I mean you. Anyone and everyone, uh, but you know the, the the kids that generally enjoy it um, are those that, that they're not afraid of hard work. I mean, wrestling is a it's a grueling sport. Um, it's not always fun. It's not always entertaining. Um, it's a situation where you, you got to be ready to do things over and over, re repetition, learning new things. You, you're learning ways to control your body that you haven't done before. Um, but generally speaking, those that aren't, aren't afraid to kind of get their hands dirty and, and, and get their head into the mess a little bit um, would be the most successful wrestlers for sure. Awesome. And what does wrestling look like in the city of Lincoln? I know you yep. work with youth, um, getting them exposed early. And I know like basketball has certain things, football has certain things, yep. but maybe not a lot of people know about what goes into like the development of wrestling, like what kind of opportunities exist for, you know, do they start at two years old? Does it start at like 18? When does it start? Yep. Um, it's, it's, it's an interesting um, kind of component here in Lincoln where you've got, you got a lot of area clubs um, you know, there's six, seven different wrestling clubs around, uh, university of Nebraska has a club that, that kids are operating out of too. Um, that really provides most of the infrastructure for kids that want to get into that sport at an earlier age. Um, you know, we, at, at rocket wrestling club, we, you know, we can work with kids pre-K. We talk about work with kids pre-K. We have some kids in there pre-K, um, but it's just helping to see what those expectations look like at pre-K. You know, four years old is about as early as I would ever suggest anybody wow. gets into it. Wow. Um, because they're, they're still just controlling their bodies. And, and, you know, if you're envisioning a Jordan Burroughs double leg out of a four-year-old, it's, <laughs> it's not going to happen. I mean, it's just not going to happen. Shoot, I'm nearly, um, uh, well, I was going to say 40, but that's a lie. Yeah. <laughs> I can't do a single leg. Yeah. Um, and so I would say, you know, most successfully when kids are starting to get into it in that mid to late elementary years is when they really start figuring out how to operate their body and how, you know, things move. And then they're also getting something out of it. Um, that's probably the best chance to do that. Awesome. Um, and so that's the kind of area clubs provide that, you know, okay. the y YMCA doesn't, doesn't do wrestling, right. or, you know, and so there's not a lot of infrastructure without that club scene. Okay. So Kira, what, why wrestling? Like what got you interested? I mean, you're softball, you said you're doing some other things in the spring. I mean, why wrestling? Um, it's kind of like a family thing. I know my brother wrestles and he's been wrestling for a really long time. My dad wrestled in high school. And so just having that opportunity to have just that environment with other girls, that really got me interested in it. And then I know with my brother, I'm his dedicated partner to beat up on. Okay. And so, you know, kind of having that challenge with him, it was really fun. And so getting that opportunity through my school with Northeast to get involved in the sport, I really liked that idea. So it, it took a little convincing, but I'm here now, so... Awesome. Awesome. What's your brother's name? Caden Ackley. Okay, Caden, you're about to go down. <laughs> All right. They give her some skills. It, it's happened stuff. before, but Caden, it's about to go down. Hey, again, this is Pete Ferguson on 93.7 The Ticket with Bigger Than The Score. I'm joined here with Patrick Neely, who's at Lincoln Northeast and, and the wrestling club in a wrestling club. And then also Kira, who is also a scholar at Lincoln Northeast and is going to be on the first girls wrestling team nsa sanction now they've had wrestling teams and wrestling opportunities but she'll be on that so please don't hesitate to give us a call on that starter Heyman hotline uh kira tell us a, a little bit more about just um who's been mentors in your life um who has meant something to you and and provide you advice that you're like man i really have appreciated that um i definitely have two one of them would definitely be my dad um he's really been there for me throughout my whole entire journey in life and he pushes me to do a lot of things that I don't want to do. But then in the end, it like pays off a lot. Like I would have never really even joined sports if it wasn't for him. Mm. And so I really appreciate him doing that for me. And then another one would be an old cheer coach. She worked at Northeast last year um, and then she moved. But she kind of just like really when I'm losing love for sports and stuff, she was the person that was there to like pushed me to keep doing it and made me better as not only a person, but as an athlete. 
I think that's always important where you have those people. I always talk about those people that provided you those A's, you know, access. And it seems like your dad provides you awareness to to those things as well. And we also have your mom that's sitting here in studio. So I don't want to be I'd be remiss if, you know, we don't give some love to mom. But what's one thing that this young woman right here um, has provided you and instilled in you as you um, kind of go on this journey? Um. I'm a very emotional person. I'm really hard on myself, especially when it comes to athletics. Mm. And she's always that person that I can go to. Like when I get frustrated after a game or I'm not happy with how I played, she's always that first person to like make me feel better and tell me that I did a good job. And even if I made errors and stuff like that, that I can get picked up and I just need to work on it and then I'll be fine. And so she's done that for me. Awesome. Kira, you have one shout out from a friend, Mike Alvarez. He says you're going to kick Caden's rear end. So, <laughs> hey, he says take state. Mike Alvarez, thank you, says take state. So go ahead and do it. Hey, Patrick, tell us about the structure of what like uh, high school wrestling is going to look like now with um, girls wrestling, um, kind of what that what the current looks like, but what the future holds as well. Yeah. Um, up until this year, um, but, you know, Lincoln Public Schools didn't have it sanctioned even as of last year. And so uh, any any female athlete that wanted to join has to walk into that very male dominated room um, and practice right alongside the boys. And that that's what that's what girls wrestling has looked like, you know, for the past decade, you know, to, minus the last few years. And you've, you've got some girls that have, have done that. I one one that I think about that all these girls are walking into wrestling rooms now um, comes to mind is Brittany Taylor out of Omaha North wow. back in the mid two thousands. Boy, she she really was a trailblazer, and I think all these these women are standing on the shoulders of those athletes now um, to say that hey, we're here, we can do this, uh, we can compete, and that's that's exciting to see. The changes that are made now is that that you know the training aspect is going to look a little bit different in that, you know, you've got two separate sanctioned sports and so they got to have their own separate structures. So what practice is going to look like and getting partners, um, you know, we're getting some coaches into the room now that are dedicated to that female wrestling program. Um, so that's pretty exciting for us. And so structures are going to change a little bit, but at the same time too, um, I kind of, I guess I describe that as a team within a team. You know, the, the goal is to kind of still keep those two programs married together, um, working together, training together, um, but but within the structures that, that they're allowed to do so. So it's it's a look a little bit different, but I don't I don't think you're going to see anything drastically different as far as training and, and, you know, what those coaches are going to be working together hand in hand, constant communication. Um, that That's how I think that's going to look. Well, I think it's like any of the sports you want that, that they both have an understanding of what's needed. Yeah. They both have similar characteristics on what makes up who gets into the sport. And so supporting one another is going to be huge. And, yep. and as I think in my head, I mean, what better year long overdue for this to occur, but what better year for it to happen than the 50th anniversary of title nine. Yeah. And so when you think about that together, her, <laughs> you it's, know, it's right. um, you know, this is, this is just, you couldn't ask for better timing again, long overdue, but better timing. What excites you most about um, just getting a season? You're going to be one of the, you're going to be a trailblazer. I mean, think about it, 2022. And I, and I hate saying that because that seems so disheartening that we still have to have that in 2022, but it first always has to happen. What is that going to be like when you get out there and you step on that mat for the first time is like, you know what, you're going to get to put your finger up the entire year and say, number one. Um, I'm really excited for the competition. And one reason why I haven't done wrestling before is just, I, did not feel very fair going against um, boys because I felt like I'd be outpowered. So just that fair, fun, even competition, I'm really looking forward to that. And I'm really looking forward to the challenge, especially with something new. And some of these girls out here have been doing it for a really long time. I know a few people that have been doing it since they were really young. that are girls. And so I'm just looking forward to trying something new and having fun. Awesome. So as we get ready to kind of end this segment, what's a piece of advice that you want to give to um, anybody out there? I was going to say to young girls or whatever, but honestly, it should be universal advice. What's some advice you want to give to people out there? I'm going to say try everything, because if you mm. don't try stuff, you're never going to know if it was fun, if you like it, if you don't like it. Like you always have to take that opportunity and you got to just run it over. You just got to you never know if you never do it. That's I love that. Like I said, you're making moments. You're still doing that. <laughs> Coach Coach Patrick, what's I'm, what's something I, you want to say? I mean, first of all, exactly what you just said is taking off those opportunities. But I guess so, you know, I'll build on that with like you're gonna get out what you put into. 
you know, try those new opportunities, but at the same time, run it over. I mean, what a great phrase that she just used with that is like, throw everything into it. Cause you're mm -hmm. not going to know what you're going to get out of it. But wrestling is one of those sports. You can't, you can't dip your toe in the water. You got to dive in and get going. Um, otherwise someone else is going to run you over. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, but, but I, that's, that's, you know, great advice. Try it all and, and put your whole heart into it. And then you'll find yourself and what, what your skills are going to be at. Awesome. Hey, coach, uh, Patrick, Kira, um, loved having you on here and, and we're looking forward to your first season. Hey, this is Pete Ferguson, 93, seven, the ticket bigger than the score. We'll be back with our next segment right after this break.